next lesson in this unit on sequences and series is on something called recursive sequences. And before I get to what recursive sequences are, I just want to do a quick little recap on the types of sequences that we have already seen. So you can see here the two formulas that we've used for the other types of sequences that we've worked with. The first one, Tn equals a plus n minus 1 times d, is used for arithmetic sequences, so sequences that have a common difference between each term. And Tn equals a times r to the exponent n minus 1 was used for geometric sequences, or sequences that have a common ratio. These types of sequences, or these types of formulas, we call explicit formulas. Because these formulas don't depend on other terms in the sequence to tell them what each term number represents. All you need to know is what the first number was, or what the common difference was, or the common ratio. What we're going to look at today are sequences that do depend on what the previous term or terms were in the sequence in order to figure out what the next term is. I write here that sometimes it is useful to calculate terms from the previous terms in the sequence. And when we create a formula that uses previous terms in the sequence, we call these recursion formulas. I want you to take a look at the following arithmetic sequence. 2, 12, 22, and 32. And then it continues on forever. We can answer the following questions. The first term in the sequence, well that's easy, that's 2. And each term after is how many more than the preceding term? Well, we can easily see here that 12 is 10 more than 2, 22 is 10 more than 12, and so on. So each term is 10 more than the preceding term. If we just take a look at the nth term, so any term in, any, in this given sequence, is how many more then, well, we're going to see what to fill in here. Well, we can see that each term here is always 10 more than the previous term. So the nth term will be 10 more than which term? Well, if I said the sixth term is 10 more than, you would say, the fifth term. Or the 19th term is 10 more than, and you would say, the 18th term. Well, the nth term is going to be 10 more than the term that comes exactly before it. And the term that comes before n is n minus 1. So if n we're talking about is 25, the term right before it is 25 minus 1, or 24. So n minus 1th term. And so now we can rewrite a formula for this sequence, 2, 12, 22, and 32, using the knowledge that each term is 10 more than the term before it and we write it out as follows. We start by saying that term 1 is equal to 2, and then we give our general term saying that Tn is equal to Tn minus 1, which we represent as the term right before the nth term, plus 10. And so this reads exactly like this sentence up here read. The nth term is equal to the term before it plus 10. And we call this an example of a recursion formula, or a recursive sequence. A recursion formula always consists of at least two parts. So let's take a look at this example. t1 is equal to 5, and tn is equal to tn minus 1 plus 2. If I were to read this sort of, or communicate this in another way, I would say the first term is 5, and any term after it is equal to the term before it plus 2. The reason why we need both parts is simple. The first part, t1 equals 5, tells us what number the sequence starts with. The second part, the general term, then gives us the rule to follow for each subsequent term. If we didn't have the first part, then we wouldn't know which number in the sequence to start with. So, for example, let's write down what the numbers are in the sequence. The first number here is 5, so term 1 is 5. The next term is equal to the term before it, term n minus 1, plus 2. Well, the term before the second term is 5, and so 5 plus 2 is 7. 
the next term is equal to the term before it plus 2. So the term before this one is 7 plus 2 is 9. And so on and so forth. I end up with 11, 13, and I can continue on. If I didn't have this first line saying t1 is equal to 5, and I just had the general term tn equals tn minus 1 plus 2, then I could start at any number, like let's say 35. And then I can say, well, each term is just the term before it plus 2. So the next term would be 37, the next term would be 39, and so on. This isn't the same term or sequence as the one I wrote up here, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, because this doesn't even contain the numbers before 35. So it's very important that we write what the first term needs to be and what the general term is. And you'll also see some examples, and we'll come to one, where you don't not only have to include the first term, but maybe the first couple terms. Here are a couple examples we can look at. So first of all, write the first five terms of this sequence. t1 is equal to 8, and tn is equal to tn minus 1 minus 5. Pause the video and see if you can write them out. We start by writing what the first term is. That's easy. 8. The next term is always going to be the term before it, tn minus 1, subtract 5. So 8, which is the term before the one I'm on now, minus 5 is 3. The next term in the sequence is going to be the term before it, minus 5. So 3 minus 5 is negative 2. And I keep this pattern going. The term before it, negative 2, minus 5 is negative 7. And then last but not least, negative 7 minus 5 is negative 12. How about this example down here? Write a recursion formula for the following sequence. 4, 5, 20, 100, 2000, and so on. The first thing we need to realize is what's the pattern? And sometimes this can be the trickiest part. Can you notice the pattern here? The first couple terms don't actually follow a pattern. From 4 to 5 it looks like I'm just adding 1. And then from 5 to 20, it looks like, well, now I'm adding 15. I know it's not an arithmetic sequence. I also know that it's not geometric. There's no direct number that I can multiply to each of these numbers to get to the next one. But I do notice that to get to 20, I can take both terms before it. So the term directly before it, and the term two terms before it. And if I multiply them together, it equals 20. Then when I look at 100, the same rule applies. If I take the two previous terms before it, 5 and 20, and multiply them together, I get 100. And 20 times 100 is also equal to 2,000. So the way this sequence works is that Tn, or any term in the sequence, is going to equal the term before it, so the term right before n is n minus 1, multiplied by the term two terms before the term that we're currently at. So the term two terms before n is n minus 2. And that's my general term. But again, we need to define, first of all, what the two terms would be for the very first case. Notice how 4 and 5 don't pertain to this rule because well, 4 doesn't have a term before it, or even a term two terms before it, and 5 doesn't have a term two terms before it. So we need to write a statement saying that t1 is equal to 4 and t2 is equal to 5 so that we can define the beginning of this sequence. And now I can write each term after those two is equal to the term before it times the term two terms before it. Here are two more examples for you to write recursion formulas for. Pause the video and see if you can come up with what the formulas are. For example 2b, we first need to figure out what the pattern is. 8, 4, 2, 2, 1, 1, 1. It seems like we're decreasing, 
So I'm decreasing by 4, decreasing by 2, decreasing by 0, and then decreasing by 1, and then decreasing by 0. It's an interesting pattern. If you can figure this out, what's actually happening is if I take 8 and divide it by 4, I get 2. If I take 4 and divide it by 2, I get 2. If I take 2 and divide it by 2, I get 1. And if I take 2 and divide it by 1, I get 1. And now notice that this pattern will now continue on forever with being 1's. 1 divided by 1 is 1, 1 divided by 1 is 1, and so on and so forth. The remaining terms will be all be 1. But how can we write a recursive formula for this? Well, what's the rule? The general term is going to be that whatever term we're at, so let's look at this 2, is equal to the term two terms before it divided by the term that's directly before it. So the term that's two terms before it is t n minus 2 divided by the term that's directly before it, which is t n minus 1. And that's my general term. Now, I have to define two terms that come before any, any given term. So I need to define my first term, t1 is equal to 8. And I need to define the second term, t2 is equal to 4. And now the remaining terms can follow this pattern. All three of these parts are necessary for a complete formula. If these two parts aren't here, then this part here is inaccurate because I could start at any number instead of 8. For example 2c, again I have 1, negative 2, negative 2, 4, negative 8, negative 32, and so forth. What's the pattern? Well, if you can see this, the pattern is that any given term is equal to the term directly before it multiplied by the term two terms before it. We've sort of seen this one before. So again, I have to write my general term, the term directly before it, which is n minus 1, times the term two terms before it, t n minus 2. And I'll need to define the very first two terms. So t1 is equal to 1, and t2 is equal to negative 2. The last example we're going to look at for this lesson is we can take a sequence and write it using an explicit formula, but also writing it using a recursive formula. So let's take a look at this example negative 2, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. I mean, we can see the pattern here. We keep going up by 2's. So let's start by writing an explicit formula. And in order to do that, we have to figure out, is this arithmetic or is this geometric? Well, since we are going up by 2, which would be a common difference, this has to be an arithmetic sequence. So my formula for the general term for an arithmetic sequence is Tn equals A plus N minus 1D. And now we can figure out what the a values are and what the d value is. So the a value is negative 2, and the d value, since we're going up by 2's, is equal to 2. So my a is negative 2 plus n minus 1 times my common difference of 2. And I'll simplify this out, so I'll expand in this 2 into the brackets, so I get negative 2 plus and then 2 times n is 2n, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and so I'm left with tn is equal to 2n, negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. This would be my explicit formula. Each term can be explicitly gotten based on this formula right here. All I have to do is plug in the position number, and bam, I get what the term number is. If I want to write a recursive formula, well now I need to have each term be dependent on the terms before it. So I can see that my pattern here is each term is 
2 more than the term before it. So my recursive formula will have a general term of tn is equal to the term before it, tn minus 1, but plus 2. Remember, this isn't good enough by itself. I also need to include the first term, since that defines where the sequence starts. So t1 equals negative 2. And now this, both statements here, represent my recursive formula. Hopefully these examples now give you a good idea as to what recursion formulas are. And you can use these when you're solving the rest of your homework questions. Have a great night.